Okay, everybody, as you can see, I will not be in the classroom with you today. So I would expect that you treat our substitute with the same amount of respect um, that you do for me. We still have work to do and we're going to continue plowing through the work that we've been doing up until now. So we're going to continue our study of the Bill of Rights, but we're going to shift our eyes to the Fifth and Sixth Amendment. So this is something new. So what I'd like for you to do now is two things. Go to the classroom and open the stream and find today's question. So there'll be a question in there just like we did the other day. And also open assignment 1050. So if you got those two things open, then you'll be ready to go. If you are me in the room right now as the teacher, please go ahead and just put me on pause. Give the kids a couple of seconds to make sure they have those two things open. Okay, so your question for the stream is, what do you know about your Miranda rights? Um, where have you seen or heard them before? Um, and what are the specific rights that you're guaranteed if you have been Mirandized? Okay, so I have a funny for you. Um, and let me go ahead and hit present here. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a little bit of a funny with Nick Offerman <laughs> from 21 Jump Street, the movie, while you're thinking about this idea of Miranda rights, okay? <laughs> Congratulations on the bus, boys. Sounds great. Thank you, Cinnamon. Who's new? The department was forced to drop the charges because you forgot to read him his Miranda rights. What possible reason is there for not doing the only thing you have to do when arresting someone? I did read him his right. I did a version of that. Do you even know the Miranda rights? Yes. Let's hear him then. <laughs> do we, do we, you got a lot of stuff to do. No, go ahead. You, got a lot you going anywhere, Schmidt? You we got time? I had a thing, but I could probably push it back. Go ahead. It's four declamatory sentences followed by a question for a total of 57 words. Okay. Uh, it's, look, it obviously starts with you have the right to remain silent. I know you've heard this before. And, and then um, it, it, I think it sounds something like, uh, well, the thing, the th uh, you, oh, right. Do you have the right to remain an attorney? Did and you say that you have the right to be an attorney? You do have the right to be an attorney if you want to. Where were you? <laughs> okay. So as you're thinking about Miranda, you've probably heard them before. So give yourself a couple of seconds to answer the question in the stream. What do you know about your Miranda rights? Where have you been or seen or heard them before? And then what are some of the specific rights you are guaranteed when you are Mirandized, so to speak? So if you are the teacher in the room, you can put me on pause and give the students about three to five minutes to answer, and then we can move on. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually watch Miranda for realsies, right? So what really is Miranda? Um, what are they, et cetera? So let's go ahead and watch this one. So a couple of videos to get us started today. Do you even know the Miranda rights? You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. Walter White, you have the right to remain silent. Most people know their Miranda rights from TV and movies. The right to remain silent, the right to your own attorney, and the right to a free attorney if you can't afford one. But why do people have these rights? What could they mean for you if you're ever accused of a crime? Well, let's run through three big myths about Miranda rights. The first myth is that federal law requires people be read their rights. There actually is no law on this. Instead, Miranda rights are based on the Bill of Rights, which the founders wrote to protect a citizen from being forced to be a witness against himself. The goal was to prevent the government from using its power to force Americans into confessions when their life was on the line. Now, when rich people were accused of crimes, they benefited from that rule. They'd just call their lawyer and avoid the police. But in 1966, the Supreme Court decided that rule should protect everyone. The court had just established a right to a lawyer for the poor. And in Miranda v. Arizona, the court ruled those rights don't mean much if people don't even know they have them. The court ruled that police could not use a confession they obtained from Ernesto Miranda because he wasn't advised of his rights. Police were then required to issue full warnings about suspects' constitutional rights, and those became known as Miranda rights. Another myth is that those rights must be read at the time of arrest. Actually, police only have to read Miranda rights before a suspect is interrogated in custody. 
So if you are ever arrested and make voluntary statements to police, even without a Miranda warning, that statement can be used against you in court. And then there's the biggest Miranda myth, that a failed Miranda warning is some kind of get out of jail free card. The Miranda rule doesn't dictate anything though about whether someone is guilty or innocent. For trials, Miranda is all about evidence. If police violate the requirement, they lose any evidence obtained through that violation, including confessions. But the same suspect can still be prosecuted with any other evidence. The rule is designed to discourage police from abusing Americans' rights, not to reward suspects in any other way. And that's what Ernesto Miranda learned. After the court overturned his conviction because of the use of the confession, he was retried without it. And a new Arizona jury still convicted him. He served about five years in prison before being released. And in 1976, 10 years after that case, Ernesto Miranda was killed in a bar fight. The suspect in his death was arrested and read his Miranda rights, so named after his victim. Okay, so the case that they refer to is Gideon versus Wainwright about the poor getting um, a right to a counsel. So you guys have already kind of looked at that. You did that at home for iWork. So really the big thing to remember about Miranda rights is that they are read to you so that you are aware of your rights going into a situation where you might be interrogated or you are placed in custody. So it's not necessarily a get-out-of-jail-free card, but it does um, force a case to go back and be retried if Miranda is violated. So you can be tried on other evidence. Okay, so today's goal, again, is how did the Bill of Rights restrict the power of the government? We're going to analyze a new case to determine how rights are defined, protected, and enforced. And then you're going to look at the impact on your modern day rights, just like we've done over and over again. We're going to follow the process that we always follow, which we're going to build our background knowledge. You are highlighting on these slides. Again, guys, it's really important that I can see that you're highlighting meaningful things. We're going to build the facts. We're going to determine what the constitutional question is. And then we're going to look at both sides of the argument. What did the Supreme Court decide? And then what's the long-term impact of that decision? Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is open assignment 150 or 1050, and make sure that you have the Miranda case file open, okay? All right. This is Sam Miranda. This is in Arizona. Again, remember Miranda versus Arizona. That's how we name the case. It tells us that this took place in 1966. So let's go to the background slide as usual. You guys know how to do this by now. Remember, we're looking for the facts of the case. So if you are me in the room or the teacher in the room, I would like for you to set a timer for about five minutes and give students the chance to highlight the background and facts and then answer the questions on slide three. So you can go ahead and put me on pause. And in that time period, again, you're, you're highlighting what is important and you're discussing, or not discussing, you're actually answering these three questions for discussion later. Okay, so let's talk about what you highlighted. So what's really important here with Miranda is that they were looking at a series of three or four cases that had these striking similarities. Each of the defendants had been convicted after making a confession while in custody but they weren't preceded by any warnings that they had the right to remain silent or an attorney. The case of Sam Miranda was the lead case in this. He was arrested and charged with assault and kidnapping, um, and he only had an eighth grade education. So the police at this time did not inform him of his right against self-incrimination, meaning his right to remain silent. They did not tell him he could get a lawyer. And during this interrogation, a Miranda wrote a confession that he had in fact did this. He was tried, um, convicted, and on the confession, actually, the top of it had a type statement saying that he understood that he was doing this voluntarily. It was questionable whether that was added later. However, they had Miranda's written confession. Miranda said, you know what? You can't do this because I didn't know that I could have an attorney. I didn't know that I didn't have to say anything. The state agreed that he was not warned of his Miranda rights, um, but they also held 
that since he had been convicted of crimes before, he should have known them. All right, so those are the basic backgrounds of the case. Now, what I'd like for you to do is talk about these three questions. So you should have already answered them in the classroom. Have a discussion about, do you believe that the Fifth Amendment has been violated? In other words, um, it, the Fifth Amendment says no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to witness against himself. Do you feel like that was violated? The sixth says that in all prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to have assistance of counsel. So do you believe Miranda's Fifth Amendment rights were violated? Do you believe Miranda's Sixth Amendment um, rights were violated? What questions do you have about that type statement at the top? of the handwritten confession? And then thirdly, should the pr procedures for an arrest be any different if you have been arrested before? So if you are a teacher in the room right now, I'd like you to put it on pause and facilitate a discussion on these three questions. That should take about five minutes. So don't be afraid to um, give your answers here or talk about what you're thinking. And remember, it's okay to say, I'm not really sure yet because that's part of the development of the case. Okay, the next thing I want you to do, and remember we don't like the slide or the way it's constructed, but what's the real question here in this case? Have a conversation, and what do you think the court is going to talk about at this point? And this is really simple. Remember, we've done this before. Um, basically, a quick statement on what you think the central issue of this case is. Give yourself maybe a minute, 30, 30 seconds to a minute to decide what you think it is and type your answer in right there. Okay, as a class, if you came up with something like, were Miranda's Fifth Amendment rights to test, not testify against himself violated, or and or was his Sixth Amendment right to counsel violated, then we we're on the right track. Okay, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of me giving you the arguments or let's or discussing them, what we're going to do this time is I'm going to actually have you write them. So I want you to give yourself a couple of minutes to think about, do you think um, that Miranda's rights have been violated, yes or no? Or do you think that this was reasonable um, given that he had committed prior crimes and there's nothing in the Constitution that says that you have to be informed of those? So I would like for you to give yourself a couple of minutes. What do you think? Where do you feel like you land at this moment? Okay, so you should be on slide five in your slide deck. Um, what you're going to do next is you're going to write your own argument, but I've given you a really, really solid structure to do this with. Okay, what I want you to do is decide which side of this you're on, right? Do you think Miranda's rights were violated or not? That's going to dictate whether you do slide five or slide six, okay? Make your decision on which side you think you're on. Once you've done that, I want you to complete this statement. All right. The Fifth Amendment rights be specific from the Fifth. So I want you to be specific from the Fifth. So what right do you feel like is or is not being violated? Um, then you're going to explain why. So I want you to go back to the background and facts and pick out three reasons why you think the Fifth Amendment right might have been violated or not, depending on which side you're on. Secondarily, look at the Sixth Amendment. Okay, What do you think might have been violated in the Sixth Amendment? It is okay if you don't have three total bullet points here when you first start. Okay, so one more time. You're going to decide, are you on the side of the state, which is Arizona, that says Miranda's rights have not been violated, or are you on the side of Miranda where you think that his rights have in fact been violated? Once you make that decision, if you are Miranda, you're going to do slide six. If you are the state, you're going to do slide five. Okay, your information needs to come from the background and facts on slide two. Also remember on slide three are the actual amendments. So the fifth and sixth are listed here pretty clearly for you to see. Um, so use those as evidence as well in your because section.
Okay, if you're the teacher in the room, then what I'd like for you to do now is give about 10 minutes for students to be able to argue either side of this. They may need a little bit of support going back and pulling out facts and putting them in and, and identifying specific rights because we're still practicing this skill. So if you don't mind at this point, go ahead and put me on pause for about a span of 10 minutes, no more than that and let students make an attempt at this. If they finish early, then you can move on. Okay, so now that you have written your arguments, and it's okay if they feel a little shaky because this is some pretty tough material to really take a look at, what I'd like for you to do now in the classroom is share them out. So if you're the teacher in the classroom, you can do this a couple of ways. You can just have people share on either side. Uh, make sure that you get both sides of the argument. You could have students get up in small groups as long as they're pretty, they have a good distance and have them share. Um, that would be okay. So you could have a little bit of movement, have students get up, join each other to share their thinking. Um, you could also have them meet with someone who does not share their thinking. So that would be a good way to do this. So give yourself about five minutes or as long as the uh, conversation is productive and then have the students sit back down. All right, so I hope that was a productive discussion um, and we're starting to develop those, that idea of arguments and using evidence in our arguments. On slide eight, um, this we've already watched. So this is primarily for students at home who are also doing the same thing today. So you can skip slide eight for now. And let's go on to slide nine. And what I'd like for you to do now is read and highlight the decision. So I do want you highlighting, I want you picking out the important factors about the Supreme Court, and I want to make sure that you understand what the Supreme Court identifies in the Miranda decision, and then what kind of the implications are for all of us as a result of it. So you have about three to five minutes to take a spin through here and see what the Supreme Court decided um, about Miranda versus Arizona. So if you're the teacher in the room, you can put me on pause. You might wanna do a time check. It's a little hard for me to guess exactly where you might be at this time. So um, go ahead and put me on pause. Give the kids three to five minutes to read the slide. All right, so now would be the time to take a quick minute just to discuss the, discuss the Miranda decision. Um, what did the court decide and why? So give yourself a couple of minutes to do that. You can put me on pause a minute again. Okay, let's move on to slide 10. I want you to decide, what do you think the impact on the rights of the citizens is as a result of Sam Miranda and his case? What do you enjoy now that perhaps you didn't have before? Or what? how are your rights protected even further than they were prior to the Miranda case? So take about two minutes to do some brainstorming on your slide. Make sure you put your answer in here. And let's have a couple of people go ahead and share out their thinking. So what do you think the big impact is of Miranda? Okay, slide 11. Uh, slide 11 is basically how it moves through the court. Um, actually, we're not even going to do this one. I will replace this. Um, so at how it moves through the court, you can take a quick look at how Miranda moves through the court and uh, move on. This one doesn't need a lot of discussion. All right, finally, here's the big thing, and this is what I really want you thinking about before you go today. Number one, how does the Fifth Amendment protect the rights of the citizens? And then how does it restrict the power that the government has? We keep asking this question over and over and over again every time we evaluate one of these cases. So be really specific about the rights that we talked about today in your answer. All right, once you finish with that, be sure to turn this in on Google Classroom and make sure that you get your credit for your work today. Also, if you happen to finish early, which is a little bit of a possibility on this one, um, please take that time to go back and clean up any work that you have not completed for my class um, today. Use that time wisely. Any other classes that you have as well. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you next week.